you've now got back together, as you say, with um, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. Um, the album's out. Um, what, what sort of future plans do you have? Are you, are you thinking about touring again? Well, after we did the TV show, uh, the first thing we did was we decided to go back on the road and, and sort of test the water there. We'd been offered gigs for a few years, and we weren't sure whether there'd be sufficient interest, but uh, there was. The first few concerts we put on sale sold out, and um, we've been touring ever since. Now, unfortunately, there's a few places we haven't made to yet that people haven't asked us for, and one of them is... But um, touring's gone great, and so, yeah, now we've... So right back to the beginning of the conversation, we've done the dangerous thing and dared to make a new album. Um, I think the touring will be a balance. You know, we're not going to be daft enough to go and play all of the new album. We will always... We always have a nice problem. We've got about 15 hit singles we need to play. A nice problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's great to have a back catalogue like that. Now, History of Modern... Um, which is the new album, as I say, is, is it fits in with the old stuff quite nicely because it's still, um, it's, it still fits in with that type of music. It's still the same sort of OMD thing. But the great thing is, of course, it's brought it up to date. Well, that was the, that was the idea we were attempting. Um, we, we looked at, um, we analysed our own musical career. We decided that our first four albums were the, were the sort of definitive dis- style that I guess effectively we invented for ourselves. So we wanted to go back to sort of speaking in the distinctive voice of Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. But yes, we didn't want to do a sort of total pastiche or nostalgia album. It needed to have production techniques that made it sound relevant for 2010. Mm. Now that um, you, you performed a couple of uh, rather wonderful gigs just recently, A Night at the Proms in Belgium and Holland, and uh, the first, or the headline, the first Vintage Computer Festival. That must have been quite interesting. We do it all sorts of weird. One of the things that Paul Humphreys and I did decide when we got back together was oh, the whole thing was quite so mad that we were going to push the envelope and do, do all the mad stuff we could possibly do got invited to play with uh, an orchestra in Belgium, which was great fun to hear our songs in a, played in a different way. We have subsequently actually dismantled them completely. We don't use any rock instruments, and we, we've played with the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra. And in fact, they've been kind enough to invite us to Shanghai. Wow. Next week to play at the Liverpool Pavilion Expo, which is fantastic. But yes, we've... Um, We've done that, and, and we've, yeah, we got invited to the uh, Vintage Computer Festival. I mean, it was geek and nerd central, as you can <laughs> imagine, <laughs> um, including Paul Humphreys himself, who is a computer nerd, and was walking around going, I used to have one of those, oh, I used to have one of those. <laughs> of all you are, even sadder than I thought you were. But um, it was great. We had a, a great time. We, we got, of course, we got a personal tour around Bletchley Park which for those people who don't know as well as being the uh, the home of the National Computing Museum is the place where they broke all the codes in the Second World War mm. um, so it was amazing to see uh, Enigma machines and the code breaking bomb machines and uh, it's just yeah it was totally bonkers um, but really good fun <laughs> <laughs> now that that brings me to something else I mean the, the, the whole thing with um with omd was that that the music was produced mainly on keyboards and you were part of that sort of keyboard revolution and a lot of people sort of slated bands like that because of the fact that there were very few live instruments or real instruments used and how did you used to feel about that well well that's it you know what constitutes live what constitutes real um we certainly got a lot of criticism in the early days, quite simply, as you say, for the choice of instruments. Um, some of it, I suppose, we, we could, you know, we expected to happen because we consciously chose to, to try to avoid what we saw as rock days, like guitar solos and drum solos and, you know, just boring songs with guitar chords accompanying them. We wanted to have a new palette of sound, so we consciously chose to use synthesizers because it opened up a a whole field of things to us, and certainly to us as well, because quite frankly, we couldn't play anything else. <laughs> Synthesizers were wonderful. 
But yeah, a lot of journalists are like, oh, it's not real, it's not rock, it's not proper, it's not manly, it's not sweaty. So everything it wasn't, we weren't. And, and um, it got a bit tiresome sometimes to constantly defending ourselves. But of course, you know, we appear to be having the last laugh now because even though we went out of fashion again in the 90s when people like Oasis decided that rock music was was around again, it, it appears that the monster has been slain one more time. <laughs> Electronic music is all fashionable again. But no doubt the rock and roll monster will return again in a few years' time. It's the well, world it, things go round in circles. I was going to say, it must be good for you because when you look at it now, there are very, very few bands that go on stage without a keyboard. I think that people have realised that, you know, you, you, you can do things with a keyboard that give you just give you so much more variety. Um, and I would imagine that most musicians surely want, want to explore variety and don't want to be stuck in a, in a sort of blinkered, narrow groove. But, um, yeah, it's... You know, I mean, if, if you look at... I mean, it's got so commonplace now, the computer and the keyboard, that people don't actually even think about it. You know, I mean... Uh, all, all of the pop music you hear is made on computer. All of the R&B and the hip-hop and the dance music is made on computer. And people don't even think about it being on a computer. They just listen to it and they just like it. That's it. That's it. Now, OMD back together again. Do you envisage this sort of um, lasting for a good long time? Or is it something which you're going to sort of do for a year or so and then, then go back to your day jobs or whatever? <laughs> Helping my kids with their chemistry homework is my day job, and I'd rather have <laughs> that as much as not. <laughs> um, we will see. You know, uh, we're not going to uh, put any parameters on where we go or what we do. Um, the only thing we will say is that if we still are enjoying ourselves, if people still want to see us live, and if we make records and people enjoy them, then um, we will continue to do it. Um, as I say, we, you know, the most important thing was that we weren't some sad middle-aged men just topping up their pension and boring people to death but on record or on stage. And so far, I don't think we're deluding ourselves, so far we don't appear to be doing that. So as long as that continues, we shall see.